They put him start to talk and say, you see you Marlene, is you cause this in a Marlene from Peter they with you. Peter you used to come at jungle, come man, bad man. And now you make Peter stop it. I'm gonna say too damn lie. Everybody know that Bob Marley used to mind bad man, but not Peter Tosh. He was a part of the original whalers, which consisted of Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, and Bunny Whaler. Blessed, blessed be people, welcome back, you see me? So today, we are going to talk about a legendary, iconic Jamaican entertainer who lose him life in a, a very tragic circumstance. You get a message, people, and today, I talk about Peter Touch. So people, Peter Touch, whose real name is Winston Herbert McIntosh, was born in Greenjill, Westmoreland. You get to me, I say, people, when Peter touched born as a little youth, his mother and his father abandoned him. And Peter touched did a bounce around and I grew up with different, different relatives. But he used to mostly stay with one of his aunts. You know what I mean? She was the one who spent more time with him. His aunt died when he was 15 years old. And Peter Touch left Westmoreland and went to Kingston where he was living in Trenchtown. Peter Touch is a very fast learner. Peter Touch learned how to play the guitar by just watching a man a play it. You get as a people. That is how gifted Peter Touch is. Peter Touch was able to watch this man play the guitar and watch him finger them and see everything he might do. And Peter Touch learned to play the guitar from right there. So it was so amazing because the man that Peter Touch was watching when he was playing the guitar, you know, the man put on him guitar and Peter Touch take up the guitar, you know what I mean, and start to play. And I play perfect. So the man asked him, Oh, you learned to play the guitar? And the man said, The man teach him. So the man not even realized that him teach him how to play the guitar by him just watching the man play. And that in the early 1960s. So Peter Touch at a young age, you know what I mean, being an aspiring musician, link up with other aspiring musicians like Bob Marley and Bunny Wheeler, you know what I mean? And them form a group when them call the Wheelers. They started to practice together to sing as a group, you know what I mean? Yeah, with the help of Joe Higgins. He's a man who give them a whole heap of advice, same way. Three other persons joined them group, you know what I mean? The Wheeling Wheelers and them start to go on with them thing. They made a couple of hit songs as a group, you know what I mean, people. Other producers were willing to work with them and the thing did not work for them at the time. Peter Touch was the only one in the group who knew how to play any form of musical instrument at the time. So Peter Touch was the one who taught Bob Marley how to play the guitar and also taught Bonnie Wheeler and other members how to play a musical instrument. You get to me as a people. So Peter Touch was a key element in the group at that time. So after a while people in 1965, Bob Marley left Jamaica and him go over America in a Delaware where he spent some time with his mother over there. So and he returned to Jamaica in 1967. He teamed up back with Peter Touch and the other members, Bonnie Wheeler and the other three members, and them start to make some more music again, start to make some more hits, and start to work with a lot of other producers, same way people, you get me? In 1972, people, the Wheelers had signed a recording contract deal with Chris Blackwell and Island Records. And you don't know, people, Chris Blackwell released the first official album for the group. The album named Catch a Fire and that was released in 1973. But people, as you understand, how corrupt some aspect of the music industry can be. There were instances when Peter Touch would be doing rehearsals for producers and producers would record the rehearsals that Peter Touch was doing and sell the music over in England. You get me as a peep. After the group are go on for a while, you know, Bob Marley started to get more famous and started to get most of the attention. You know what I mean? Bob Marley was becoming the more prominent artist out of the group. You get me as a people. Peter Touch never really took that too well. You get me as a people. Peter Touch asked Chris Blackwell for release him solo album and Chris Blackwell refused. So Peter Touch and Bunny Wheeler left the Wheelers, you know what I mean? And decided to them go up on them own. So Peter Touch did done with Island Records and done with Chris Blackwell from that time. Because Peter Touch and Bunny Wheeler were feeling that they were being treated unfairly. You get to me as a people because as you, as you know, Bob Marley was the upfront artist now. Bob Marley was the man who get most of the attention. So Bob Marley did basically overshadow the rest of them in the group. So it's hard for them really rise above because they don't know Bob Marley rise up and becomes the biggest artist in the group at that time. But Peter Touch 
talent is nothing to be taken for granted people because pe remember Peter Touch is the one who taught the other members of the group how to play musical instruments. Peter Touch is the one that wrote some of the biggest hits that were on their first album. Songs like Get Up, Stand Up, 400 Years and No Sympathy. You understand me as a people? So Peter Touch's talent is not to be taken for granted. Peter Touch was a very talented entertainer. Peter Touch went on with his career as a solo artist and he kept on making it songs you know what i mean even though he was not as big as bob marley you know what i mean he kept on doing his thing peter touch was also known as the stepping racer you get what i people peter touch is a man who always a lick out from the government you know what i mean and always a pressure the government in you know, music so them to legalize marijuana and so on and so forth peter touch always about corruption and them things there is a man who always using decent language all over as a matter of fact he have a song with a whole heap of indecent language in it, like that alone, make it up. You get me, I say, people. So, Peter Touch was more like a revolutionist, you get me? Peter Touch did even go on a unity concert where Bob Marley did keep on at the time, you know what I mean? Where the Prime Minister was there and the opposition leader. And Peter Touch go on the stage and Peter Touch lick out against everybody straight. Peter Touch burn out the two of them, you know what I mean? Peter Touch burn out the corruption and everything we are going on, you know what I mean? Peter Touch make them look a way people. Michael Manley and Edward Siago was there. You know, Peter Touch roll up all them cliff on stage same way and light and burn same way. You know what I mean? Because it's a man where he really not care like that. Talking about legalize it. The time has just come. Don't feel no way. And don't feel like this 1914 business can work forever. In Ethiopia, where I originated, where culture originated, herb is a part of my culture. Smoking herb is a sacrament, not a sacrilege. Not smoking herb is violating my own constitutional rights. And to be humiliated, aggravated, and brutalized for the smoke of herb is totally degrading in this 20th century. And I, you see standing here, have all right to talk. And you know why I can talk? Because I suffered the tribulation and accusation for the smoke of herb. But the sun shall not smite I by day, nor the moon by night, nor the pestilence that lurks in dark places, nor destruction that wasted at noonday. For I delight is in the laws of Jah, who created Zion and Earth. So now that we have a better understanding of who Peter Touch was, you get me? I say, let us look at the way that he died. You know what I mean? Kind of spooky and is a kind of suspicious death. You get me? I say, people. The allegations are that Peter Touch was at home with his common law wife and other friends, you know what I mean? Just chilling on a Sunday evening when other persons who are also associates of Peter Touch came to the premises, you know what I mean? Held them up with firearms, made demands of them, you know what I mean? For money because Peter Touch had just returned to Jamaica from doing some business in the US and so they were demanding money because they must say yes you have money and they want money they were also blaming his common law wife saying that Peter Touch used to mind the bad man them but since him have woman live with and so on and so forth him stop spending money upon the bad man them and I fear her fault and she cause Peter Touch fear got dead and so on and so forth people there is something about Peter Touch's death when I really 
add up fully. You get to me, I say, people, there are a lot of rumors going around that the man, Lepo, who killed Peter Touch, had gone to prison for Peter Touch. You know what I mean? A firearm was found and that man took, took the firearm and took the blame. And Peter Touch did not do what he was supposed to do for the man's children plus family members. But there is no evidence of none of that happening. In my opinion, it can, it could have been plain old bad mind. You know what I mean? Some people don't want to see us strive. Or it could have been a situation where this it is coming from a much bigger source than is talked about. Remember, say, Peter Touch is a revolutionist in you know, the people. You get me? He's a man with eyes that look against certain things. But peeps, listen to a Peter Touch girlfriend of say about that fateful night when he was killed. Marlene Brown picks up the story. Friday night at about 8 o'clock. I was expecting Fria and his queen, Joy. They were both coming over to spend the night with me and Peter. While waiting upstairs, I hear a knock at my gate. I was now upstairs with friends and one of Peter's musicians. I said to one of Peter, brethren Michael, to go downstairs, let him fry because I'm expecting fry and joy. Michael now go downstairs, go through my door, so one of Peter's friends coming through the gate, my dogs them rush him and rush back right through the gate. I saw that it was not free eye, but it was a, somebody who visited the yard regularly. Who was that somebody? A brother named Lepo. So he being a regular visitor now, I backed off the dogs and told him and his friends to come in. which they did what, and enter in this reception area. Two of them pulled guns and said, where is Peter? Let's lead them upstairs, march upstairs. And we enter the living room area now. They tell everyone, face down. And we all responded, face down. And I said, tell one just come on. I said, Peter, I said, you? They got dead tonight, so you nobody know, said nothing. Be come for kill yo. I read one come over to me and say, say yo, you got dead tonight. So who nobody say nothing. Just give me all the US dollar when you bring come. Come over killing her, but give me the US dollar first. So we said to them, say we don't have no money. We just come down, all we have is two hundred dollars. US, that's all Peter had in the house. So Peter gave them the two hundred US dollar, tell them to take anything they want. Search the house, take anything because we don't have the money, which Peter never had the money. Them search the house, them have us there 15 minutes, them tell us to bail it. No, all of us got them home belly man, because I never want to see them face, the other two guys. One of the gunmen, Dennis Lobon, known as Lepo, was a frequent visitor to the house since his release from prison. Then Lepo, him start to talk and say, you see you Marlene, it's you because it's not Marlene, from Peter, they with you. Peter used to come at jungle, come man, bad man. And now you make Peter stop it. I'm gonna say to a damn lie. Everybody know that Bob Marley used to mind bad man, but not Peter Tosh. Peter Tosh is not that type of man. So not because now Peter Tosh live with a woman who don't want to come to those things, say use me as a pastor. Say Peter don't want man, you know, because that's what he wants. He always come and want Peter to support him because he walks to every musician here looking for support. Just like Peter Tosh house. Which I don't like him, so I always encourage Peter not to allow this boy to come to the house because I just don't like him. In the middle of this tense situation, Friay and his wife Joy arrived at the front gate. One of the gunmen let them in. So Fredo stand this and I started first, I barely to let them. So Fredo started looking at space because I never realized and I couldn't believe what he was seeing, you know. So Fredo stand up shock on the most. So I said, Friay, please go down, it's something real. Go down. Fry, go down. I tell Joy, I said, Joy, come over this side. Come over to me, because I was now in the dark. So I tell Joy, I said, come sit down beside me in the dark. Free, I know, dark. Peter was more like in the light, you know, to the stairs. And the seven of us lying on the ground there, still constantly asking for the money, US dollars or the chest that we have there and then we're there. Peter told them that they could search the house and take anything that they wanted. 
anyway, they're still in CCL. And one of them now said, take, take the machete now. I said, well, let him go and chop off Peter head. Sister Marlin showed to him that he can't do that. And it's like, one of them now starts to say, um, you know, come with us deal with or come for deal with, like, you know? We had to argue with the man, we don't argue, argue with the man, you know, we just deal with or come for deal with. And then the fire, the uh, open fire, the fire single shot first, that caught Marley in the head. And then fire two more shots at Peter in his head. And then they just open up a barrage of shots on us lying on the ground. There was a piece of black furniture right beside my head that gave me my head a dark look. It picked up five. My mother for pick up all of them. So when them things to me did them start fire. They wanna turn them start fire again. Watch me, she said me no move, then must turn upon Peter. Bubba the boy. They start turning shot everybody in circle. Go right, round. So I just lay down there because I feel a bullet go through by head. But I feel like it come through. So I said to myself, say, no, something is since I can't trust, I now move. I can wait till they move off. Because when them shots, them never move. Then wait a couple of minutes, see the body not move, because the body never make a sound. So I said to myself, say, wait, everybody must have found dead like me. So I wait until I hear like bike start up. I turn the light, I see Peter in a pool of blood, friend a pool of blood, dog in a pool of blood. Doc Brown was already dead. Peter Tosh died that night in hospital. Free Eye died three days later, and the other four were hospitalized with various injuries. Where did you receive shots? One in the head, one in the back, and one through the leg. Do you believe robbery was the motive of the shooting? No, they just used that as an excuse, because they couldn't just <clears throat> come and make people feel that like they were sent. I don't care, I know, they were sent. Because the order that they came in, that Peter, you're there tonight, me come for kill you. Them come for kill me. Them words, they will never forget. Peter Tosh, the stepping razor, the rebel, the toughest, was given a state funeral made possible by those Hola, whom he so uncompromisingly opposed. He finally succumbed to the violence of the concrete jungle which nurtured him. Like Bob Marley and Carlton Barrett before him, he could not quite shake off the culture of blood and fire which surrounds reggae music. He sang about it, practiced it himself, at times idolized it. Even in death, Tosh was authentic. Tosh was one of the musical giants of the last 20 years. He was a part of the original Wailers, which consisted of Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, and Bunny Whaler. When the group became known as Bob Marley and the Wailers, because Bob Marley began to have individual star status, and eventually broke up, it is a tribute to the star qualities of Peter Tosh, that he too was able, in addition to Bob Marley, to make the international music scene as an outstanding reggae artist. When Bob Marley died, Peter Tosh inherited his crown, so to speak, as the king of reggae, and he was widely proclaimed across the world. So as you all heard people, a very sad sad situation in my opinion the intention of that home invasion was never to carry out a robbery that the intention of that home invasion was to kill peter touch and whoever was there with him you get to me as a people because this is a man who is known to peter touch and known to everybody else who was on the premises at that time so if he had gone there and uh, if he had gone there and carried out a robbery and left 
without killing anyone then it would be so easy for the world and everybody to know that he was the one who carried out the act this man was not wearing any mask and this man is a person that frequents peter touches property so people in my opinion this was never really a robbery attempt you get me i say people this was a it people yes peter touch lost his life as a result of a hit whoever put the hit on him i don't know but peeps based on what i'm hearing it is a hit because it could have never been just a simple robbery attempt because if he was robbed then he wouldn't know who robbed him because he didn't know the man so once a man once once a man go like that, the intention is to kill you. It seems that the instruction was, no matter what happened, make sure you say him dead. You get to be as a people. So, in my opinion, that is how Peter Touch lost his life. Somebody, for some reason or the other, decided that they are going to get rid of Peter Touch. And if it wasn't a hit from somewhere else, that could have simply means a lep of them, they just get corrupt. You get to me, I say, because it seems like Peter Tuck and Bob Marley were not good at one point. And I mean, they never have no dealings. Because as you can hear, Peter Touch, come on, law, wife, uh, accused Bob Marley, say, Bob Marley used to feed con man and so on and so forth. So if that is the case, and Bob Marley used to do that, Bob Marley did not eat you one. You understand me, I say, people? So if Bob Marley used to do it and him not do it no more, and these men feel like they are entitled to be compensated by artists who are making money and peter touch is not giving them any money because he live with him woman and so on and so forth you know say then we want to kill him for that too you get to mess people and that's just playing all bad mind and corruption as well as there is a rumor going around that this same man lepo who eventually ended up taking peter touch's life it is also rumored that he is responsible for killing his brother you get a mess of people say so imagine if a man go to prison already for kill him brother why you don't want to keep a man like that around you as an entertainer me just can't understand how the man them meds you know what i mean why a man or kill him own a brother and you have him around you if a man willing to kill him own flesh and blood what will he not do to you so people the, the rumors that have been going around that peter touch was killed because one of his friends took the blame for a firearm case for him and went to prison does not make much sense to me you get to me say people based on the manner in which peter touch was killed you get to me say people i believe that peter touch's murder was actually a it based on the information that his common law wife has provided you get to me say people but you know what i mean as an artist as an entertainer where I make money, you get me? And you're a person of importance, you need to protect yourself because you have to remember, say, there are envious people out there. And everybody wants to see a rise, and everybody wants to see a strive. Everybody not going to be happy for your success. And you have to be careful the kind of people that you allow to get close to you. Anyway, peeps, want to like, subscribe, and share. Bless it.